Hi guys, welcome back. I've got another skincare reaction video for you and this is a highly requested one. It's Dr. Pimple Popper. It is on Harper's Bazaar on the Go To Bed With Me series. Um, I'm gonna leave a link to the video in the description box below in case you wanna see the original video. I got messages from people saying they really wanted me to, to watch this one and react to it. Then I got other messages from people being like, you have no right to react to this. She's a dermatologist and stuff. And you know what I have to say? She's also a human being. And you know what? We all make mistakes. So I'm gonna go ahead and react to Dr. Pimple Popper. So let's do this. What a long day. I am ready for bed. So why don't you come to bed with me? As a board certified dermatologist, I um, am trained, you know, we are trained to be the experts at all conditions of the skin, the hair, and the nails. And so we know a lot about these products that are out there, the skincare products, and know about the ingredients and what they do. But we definitely certainly have levels of how much we care about it. Um, some people have a really deep interest in it. I definitely am always aware of what I'm putting on my skin, but I am not crazy about it. I don't have a lot of steps in my regimen, but I do know my skin type. I am dry and I'm on the sensitive side. So I like to keep things to a minimum and I don't like to do things that aggravate my skin. The first step. So I, I actually love that she came out right out the gate. Um, you know, I've said things like this before to you guys, and I get criticism from it so about it sometime, but dermatologists, like she said, are trained to treat conditions of your skin conditions, right? You don't you tend to go to a dermatologist when you have perfect, flawless skin. Then you're like, why do I need to see a dermatologist? Instead, you go when you've got major issues and you need somebody to help diagnose it and help you get something, a prescription or something that's going to treat your skin. And so that's something that I, I point out a lot. Some dermatologists really love skincare. They're very into skincare. Um, I brought on, you know, like Dr. Annie Chu and Dr. Nina Decide. They both love skincare. They're very interested in skincare. And so that's why I bring them on. Um, but she's saying she's not that interested in it. She keeps it very simple. She knows her skin type, which I do think a good dermatologist should know their skin type and should be able to tell you what kind of skin you have too. Um, but I love that she points that out. I love also that she's like, I'm a board certified dermatologist. That is a very, very um, important distinction in my book because that means that she did extra training as a dermatologist to become this expert in what she does. So I really love that she pointed out these things because this is what makes it so different. And this is one of the reasons why I can go ahead and react to her. I mean, I could react whether she was a doctor or not, but I, you know, it's one of those things that's like, I might know potentially more about skincare than she does. You know, we could probably go head to head and have a really good time doing it. I think dermatologists are obviously very necessary and very educated and know exactly, you know, they're, they're really good at what they do. Um, but that doesn't mean that they know everything about skincare. And I just know this from working alongside with dermatologists in my career. It's, you know, they, they don't necessarily find it that important sometimes to like get into the like minutia of all these ingredients. They want to focus on the main things. They're very clear about um, what they think you should stay away from. A lot of them say, for instance, fragrance. They're very clear about wanting you to use sunscreen, for instance. So there's a lot of things like that about dermatologists. So I think keep that in mind. That is one of the big differences between like a dermatologist versus like an esthetician, for instance. What I'm gonna do is take off these eyelashes. I don't want wear eyelashes every day, but I had to do it today, of course, because you know, we're gonna be on camera. And I want to use a really good oil uh, makeup removal. I, I've used this for years since I've been a teenager. It's by Facile, by Lancome. And I like to use, I found these really amazing, actually, um, cotton remover pads. I don't know, I'm adored. Maybe everybody knows about this. But I don't like the ones you can buy in stores because they get like very linty. And I don't like Kleenex because it will tear. This is like Kleenex with a pad in it. And you can really soak them really well with these oils and just like dab them across your face. I don't like to rub because again, I'm very sensitive. So I like to just dab and let it soak up and remove my eye makeup. So that's the first thing that I do. Okay, so I will say, you guys know that I don't love when people rip their um, lashes off but she doesn't wear them on a regular basis so i'm gonna give her a break there she even said it she's like wearing it because she's on camera and stuff to be honest it didn't even look like it tugged at all it looked like those came off like it like no in like in no time i think it's totally fine to use an eye makeup remover i love i actually want to look into these cotton pads because i'm the same way i'm very very picky about the cotton pads that i use and i don't want any lint and i don't want them to be too fluffy or anything like that so i'm very interested in these ones that she's using but yeah 
you know, put it, put on an eye makeup remover, soak it. I would hold it first onto my eye, let it kind of melt down the makeup a little bit, then wipe gently away. Um, she just looks like she was just kind of going for it. It works, it takes off some of your makeup, but you're gonna get more benefit from it if you hold it there and let it soak a little bit first. So the next step is using my SLMD cleansing wipes. These are my favorite wipes. And also I dab at my face. I try to get off the excess makeup. And I don't rub because I'm more prone to getting rashes or irritation. And when you do that, you get more wrinkles because those change your skin and make you look more wrinkled and more and older, which we don't like. I mean, even like a, a washcloth is gonna create micro tears. So anything that's kind of abrading your skin, so you just need to be gentle. I use a hydro. It, that was an interesting thing to see. She's obviously promoting her own line, so she's got makeup wipes within her line. But she does point out that she's just kind of dabbing her skin, which is interesting. I've never seen someone use makeup wipes and dab their skin. Um, so that was really interesting to see that she was kind of like dabbing it. Um, she talks about the, inf the inflammation. I talk about inflammation all the time, and she's right. Using even like a washcloth is going to, you know, tear at your skin and everything and be rough no matter what. So you need to be very, very gentle. But I love that she acknowledged that inflammation because that inflammation I talk about all the time, it can lead to the dark spots, to fine lines and wrinkles, all of that kind of stuff that catches up with you. Um, it, it really is like what you're doing. It's in your technique a lot of the time. I'm hoping that we're about to see her do like a true cleanse with the cleanser right now. And then I, I kind of would, I, I might actually give her a pass with the makeup wipes because I've never seen someone just dab their face with the makeup wipe. You know, in our private Facebook group, a lot of people will say like, what truly is wrong with makeup wipes? And truly, like truly, the thing that made me upset about makeup wipes is that I get skincare um, routines from people all the time. People asking me what I think they are doing wrong and what they should change and all that stuff. One of the most common things that I see is that people tell me they only use makeup wipes. Like that is their one and only only cleanse and that is when it truly truly is like a no-no you should not use makeup wipes as your one and only cleanse this is an interesting thing to see because the second thing that i hate about makeup wipes is i think that people really are rough with their skin because they don't work that well to really remove your makeup so if you're ter if you're tugging at your skin you're causing inflammation and it's just not good for you so this is interesting i'm gonna cross my fingers and if she uses a cleanser i'm probably gonna give this one a pass Creating a facial cleanser and I alternate it with a salicylic acid cleanser because my two issues is that I'm really dry and it's because I'm darker complected I'm prone to brown spots so I like to use my SLMD salicylic acid cleanser and switch it out every other day with just a hydrating fa facial cleanser this one's by CeraVe and salicylic acid is really great because it's an exfoliant it's gonna exfoliate and get rid of those dry dull dead skin cells on the surface of your skin so your skin is more radiant it's going to actually settle down within your pores too and help prevent new acne or from or blackheads from forming and the trick is with salicylic acid cleansers is you can actually leave it on your face for a couple minutes if you wanted to and really that can help to increase the penetrance of it i mean i think in a cleanser you're going to wash it wash it off ultimately obviously but it's going to really help to get off any of this extra gunk that I missed with my wipes or with my um, eye makeup remover. So one thing that's really important, I think that's very important about washing face that I know is from a dermatologist perspective is when you're washing your face, you're actually getting rid of moisture on your face. So you really, so you really want to not go really hot and you don't want to go really cold either. You don't want to shock your, your system really. You don't want to shock your skin. Lukewarm water is the best. And I don't rub my face either. I just wash off the salicylic acid. So again, I dab, and I also, what's so important at this point is when your skin is still moist, that is the prime time to moisturize your skin, actually, because if your skin is wet, the um, just out in the air, your the, the moisture evaporates, and it actually pulls that moisture, the air pulls that moisture out of your skin and you get drier. That's why you kind of get that tight feeling after you wash your face and you sit around for a while. So okay, I'm gonna stop her there. I love that she's alternating with her cleansers. Um, salicylic acid cleanser can be too strong. I tend to find salicylic acid cleansers to be very effective, and you can. You can let it sit on your skin a little bit longer. Ultimately, you're gonna rinse it off. Um, but I still find, for some reason, and I've always thought this, even before I got into the skincare industry, that salicylic acid cleansers were my favorite way to use a salicylic acid. So I love that she's alternating it so that she's not doing it. She's not over drying her skin, not 
um, over exfoliating her skin, especially since she says that she has sensitive skin. I mean, you can see that sensitivity coming up, like the redness is starting to come up in her skin as she's cleansing. It could be argued that just like touching your skin, rubbing it and stuff like that can cause that redness. But I think it's even, you know, it shows even more so on her skin. I could do this to my skin and you wouldn't see any redness. So that's like the difference in our sensitivity. I do love that she's also using the CeraVe hydrating cleanser. It's just such a good staple. Everybody should really have it in their medicine cabinet because it's just a really good one to go to if like you're having some kind of reaction for your skin and you need a cleanse, it's great to have. I love that she keeps pointing out things like um, that you have to be gentle, you have to dab, even when you're just drying your skin. Use lukewarm water. You don't wanna shock your face, whether it's hot, too hot, or too cold. I just, you know, she's pointing out really important things about skincare. These are like those general things that you should just know about skincare. And then that whole thing about the water, the air pulling like the moisture out of your skin, that is, the main, that is one of the main reasons why I always tell you guys, don't do your skincare routine on an airplane if you can help it because that's exactly what happens. It happens at a faster rate on an airplane because the air is so dry there. So you wanna make sure that you're trying to like pack in all that hydration and moisture before you get on an airplane. Same thing here, you're gonna get that tightness and stuff if you don't put your skincare, if you don't put your skincare products on while your skin is still damp. That's why a toner is nice, that's why an essence is nice, that's why uh, some kind of a humectant um, hydrating serum is really nice to use before you move on in your skincare routine. This is the ideal time to put a moisturizer on. I like my SLMD Hyaluronic Acid Serum. Hyaluronic Acid, you've probably seen it in a lot of products these days. Well, Hyaluronic Acid is hydrophilic, meaning that it draws in water. When you put it on your skin, it's really gonna seal in that moisture and minimize what we call trans-epidermal water loss. And I'm more prone to that than others because I have dry skin. I actually have eczema, which is means that my barrier on my skin is not as good as other people, so I tend to lose moisture more easily. So I really need extra moisturizer. In fact, I could put Vaseline, I could put like petrolatum on my face and and it won't break me out, I'm so dry. In terms of things that I wish that I... I think that's a very important distinction because we talk about coconut oil a lot. I don't talk about Vaseline very often because I just don't tend to find it comes up in conversation much anymore when people talk about their skincare routines, but it's a good distinction. She acknowledges that she's got that type of skin. I think she's pretty much saying that she can do it. It doesn't mean that everybody can do it and I venture to say most people can't just put it. Vaseline all over their face without breaking out. So that's just a very interesting uh, distinction that she's making. Um, had not done in the past. I wish I didn't rub my eyes so much. You know, I love my cats. Don't rub your eyes so much. I have cats and I can't give them up, but I probably shouldn't have cats in the have had cats in the first place because I'm a little allergic to them. And any kind of inflammation that you get, any irritation, any kind of like rash that you get, can really age you. Actually, it, it's cumulative, and it and it really increases the wrinkles and increases the aging. But I also feel like, thank goodness, I have good genes for my mom. So hopefully, I'll I'll, I'll balance out somehow. So at this point, I I love that she's talking about inflammation. I talk about inflammation all the time, you guys. Again, I go back to the makeup wipes. This is why I hate makeup wipes for the most part is because I see a lot of people causing inflammation, but it can be caused by a lot of things. You can even get inflammation from going to like a hot yoga class or going to like soul cycle and working really, really hard and sweating, like sweating it out so hard in that dark, hot room and everything. If you turn really, really red, that's, you know, you're causing some inflammation in there. Like your skin is starting to, you know, get inflamed, it's turning red, you could get some dark spots. It happens to me all the time. So that's something to keep in mind. Inflammation just isn't good. You wanna make sure you're eating stuff that keeps you from being inflamed. You wanna make sure that you're not doing anything that inflames your skin. It's just, it's one of the worst things. It's one of the worst things for your health too. So it's just something to keep in mind. I like to take a little break and let all of this soak in for a moment. And I like to put on my deodorant. At least it gives me a little break because this is a little secret that I have for you. Deodorant is best applied at night. It is most effective at night because you, you're putting it on when your sweat glands are the most dormant. So it's going to make it more effective. So this is the time that I put on deodorant. You know, it's funny. Um, I put my deodorant on at night too. And I, it's, I, somebody had told me something along those lines, but she explained it a lot better, so there you go. You know what's interesting is so um, she says just that she has dry skin, right? She's got the eczema and stuff, and she put on the hyaluronic acid serum, but she's gonna let it sit for a second. That's always that's interesting to me because um, I think this is actually the prime time. She even said it herself that this is the prime time to do the rest of your skincare routine um, is when you put on 
you know, when your skin's like a little bit more moist. So usually when you put on a hyaluronic acid serum or any kind of humectant serum, you wanna then move on to your moisturizer. So it's really interesting to me that she said um, she likes to let it sit for a second. So I'm curious to see what's next. And I can't believe I'm doing that on camera. But here you go. The reason I want this to settle in is because I like to put my moisturizer on before I put on any retinol or retinoid. These are products that we know as dermatologists, they've been around for generations and we know that they help to minimize fine lines and wrinkles over time. Retinol is an over-the-counter uh, version of this product. There's a prescription variety as well, but they are a little bit irritating to the skin. So I like to put moisturizer on before and I like to let it sit for a little bit. There is um, some question as to whether uh, retinol or retinoids interact with a moisturizer or lose their effectiveness because you apply them the same time as moisturizer. And I think there is some truth to that. And some people might actually put a retinol on before they put on moisturizer on. I just like to put the moisturizer on first because I really want to keep that moisture in my skin after I wash it. And I like to just let it sit for a little bit and then apply the retinol. And that makes me feel like it's going to be, it's going to be pretty effective then. This is some um, so that's, you know, I like that she pointed that out. People ask this question all the time. Um, they, they like hear that they should put their retinol or their retinoid, some type of retinoid, prescription, retin-A, whatever, on top of their moisturizer. I really do think if you're getting started with retinoids, you should use a moisturizer to like start to, it, it I mean, it, it essentially is diluting it. That's what she's saying. Um, and there is truth, truth to that because it is, it's diluting the retinoid that you're using. Um, but the, it's the point that you're trying to actually do. You're like trying to dilute it so your skin can get used to it. And then you start to apply it before your moisturizer. So once your skin actually has gotten used to it and that's when you go a little bit stronger with it. So you're just like slowly moving into your retinoid use. It's interesting, she's calling uh, her hyaluronic acid serum a moisturizer. So it's funny, I went ahead and looked up the ingredients in her serum, and it's actually an oil-based serum. So it is a moisturizer, you guys. There's an occlusive in it. Um, it's squalane. It's an occlusive, it's an oil. Um, and so it's actually a serum that has oil and hyaluronic acid in it. So it's very interesting. It's like a moisturizer. It truly is actually a moisturizer. Um, when I was watching it, I was like, oh, she only put on the serum. But now that I know that it has an occlusive in it, it it's actually a moisturizer too, because it's an oil. Um, and I'm now really curious about how the two interact and how it feels together and stuff like that. I'm sure it's great. So I know a lot of you guys messaged me. I saw those messages in our private Facebook group. A lot of people are like, she only put on hyaluronic acid serum and not moisturizer, even though she said she has dry skin. Well, there you guys go. She did a little combo, one, two combo and tricked you. Um, so, it, but you know what? She said in the beginning, she likes to keep her skincare simple. And I'd venture to say she actually, it wasn't like the ultimate simple skincare routine, but she did keep it fairly simple. And she basically made that a one-stop shop. Like she just put on the hyaluronic acid serum that has an oil in it too. So she just mixed the two with her product and then she put it on her skin and let it sit. So that actually makes way more sense to me now. Um, I'm curious if she's gonna put on a retinoid though um, for this skincare routine, because she mentioned that, so let's keep going. Thing that I actually, I, I, I live by as well. The healing ointments, these are really important for me, again, because I'm saying I'm super dry. I put them everywhere. I put them in all around my lips and around my eyes at night. Um, and some people, be careful putting them around your eyes. They could promote milia, which are like these little baby cysts around the eyes. So some people can't tolerate that, but I can, because I'm very dry. So I put them there to protect those areas too because you don't want to put a retinol close to your eyes. It, the skin there is too sensitive and it will irritate you. I get acne bumps every now and then. Again, I love that she made that distinction. She can use that kind of a balm around her eyes and her lips because, I mean, lips, I can pretty much do any kind of like a thick balm around my lips and I prefer a thick occlusive. Um, but around the eyes, that's a very interesting one because she's saying one, she does it because she doesn't want her retinoid to be too, um, she doesn't want her retinol specifically. I think she's pointing out she uses retinol. She doesn't want it to like irritate her skin or irritate her eyes or anything like that, especially because that is an even more sensitive area of her skin. Um, but not everyone can tolerate that thick of a balm, that thick of an occlusive because thick, thick occlusives can actually promote milia. And so when you guys are like, messaging me about milia and stuff like that, that's something to keep in mind. How much moisturizer are you using? How thick are you packing it on? How thick is it? Can your skin tolerate, tolerate it? Does it even need it? So that's something to keep in mind for sure. 
It's sort of like a uh, hormonal thing, which is with most of us women, we get hormonal acne. Usually for that sort of thing, I'm gonna put a benzoyl peroxide spot treatment on the area. Um, so I'm, I usually just, benzoyl peroxide is really great because it's antibacterial. And uh, I just will usually just spot treat the area. That works in two ways. It's gonna help destroy bacteria that are really thriving in that area. And also, it really keeps your hands off the area. The other thing that I can do that I'm sorry most of you guys can't do, just because I'm a dermatologist, I inject my own pimples. If I have one that I feel that's under the surface of the skin, if you have a dermatologist that you, um, that you see, you can potentially see them and they can give you a little shot of low potency corticosteroid in the area and it gets rid of a zit within 24 hours. So in general, I can get big ones, but I usually get rid of them within 24 hours. So it sucks for us because Throughout our life, we think, okay, why am I not done with acne? Isn't this supposed to be a teenage condition? But throughout our life, we're still getting acne, adult acne. Well, it's really common, and it is completely driven by hormones. But remember, it's a good thing in a sense because it shows that you have hormones, that you're, that's a youthful thing, and to have oil in your face to get acne is a youthful thing. So um, try to remind yourself of that. The problem is that people will You know, that's an interesting way of thinking about it is like it's youthful to have your hormones raging, I guess, and have, uh, have acne. I'm gonna start telling myself that whenever I get any breakouts. Um, but the fact that she's like pointing out that she can give herself her own uh, cortisone shots, I mean, that's kind of like checkmate. She's kind of like the ultimate go to bed with me skincare routine so far, cause she's like, look what I can do that none of you guys can do. I can give myself my own cortisone shot. I will say cortisone shots are useful um, in thought, but be very careful with that. I've actually seen people get like these little dents in their skin um, from cortisone shots from uh, someone using like too much in their skin. And I've seen this more than once, you guys. So this can happen. And it can happen even if you go see like a really good board certified dermatologist. It kind of depends on what you've been doing. Have you been picking your skin a lot? Are they using too much of it? Those are things to keep in mind. I've also seen dermatologists turn people away because they picked at their acne, they picked at their pimple way too much and destroyed it essentially and then decided they wanted to go see the dermatologist to get the cortisone shot and you really, it's like, you can't do it. They can't do it. They gotta turn you away because they don't want to ruin your skin also. So it's a really, there's a like fine line between using it or not. Try to pop a pimple too early because it's there and you can't keep your hands off of it. I get it. If you just squeeze a pimple when it's too early, it will just get bigger and redder and angrier and end up worse. Um, the ideal time to really extract a pimple is when they're as close to the surface as they can be. You want to make sure any kind of pimple comes as close to the surface as you can because then you can just gently nick it if you do anything at all. Like, I'm a dermatologist, I'm not gonna tell you to do anything. I don't want you to do anything. I, 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 I can't because I don't want you to be unsafe, but I know people are gonna do it, so that's my best advice for you. To just know that the more superficial something is in your skin, the less risk you have of permanently scarring yourself. A lot of blemishes that are red or brown, they're gonna go away, but that's probably from a lot of pushing and manipulating, so trying to leave things alone is the best thing to do. So I have a little zit here on my chin. I usually get them around my chin uh, certain times of the month. And so I actually have um, my own stock of low potency corticosteroids at home. I take them with me on vacations because that's usually when you get a zit. So I usually pull up a little bit of my little syringe here and I use a baby syringe needle and I just take my alcohol and clean the area off. Don't learn from me, okay? I just inject. No, but I'm not doing that because I want you to like learn from me. I mean, that's what we do in the office and you can see how easy it is. Um, and so a dermatologist can really do that and can, especially if you have a big event, like you have a prom, you have a wedding, uh, your photo is being taken. It's really great to have your, uh, your zit injected because it can make, get rid of them like so quickly. I'm going to get nice and comfy and cut. Seriously, she's like, mic drop because she can give herself her own uh, shot. But, um, but you know, I, I would use it sparingly. Use it when you have a big event, prom, something like that, a wedding. If you get that zit that you just need to get rid of and it's like an underground one, then go to a dermatologist, don't pop it. I love that she acknowledged that she knows people are gonna pick at their zits. So do it at the right time and that's when it's like, really ready. Otherwise you're going to cause more inflammation and it's going to stay there even longer because then you get that hyperpigmentation. But definitely don't try to buy any of this stuff and give your own injections at home. Be very careful with that. Go to a board certified dermatologist if you are going to do it. I with my cats. 
All right, I'm ready for bed. I'm gonna go cuddle with little dim sum. So good night. I love that her cat's name is Dim Sum. How cute is that? Um, I thought her I thought her routine was interesting, really good. Um, you know, I obviously don't really have anything to say. She even when she used makeup wipes, this is the first time that I'm kind of like, might be okay. That and when uh when Adrian Bailon did it too, because I gave her a little bit of a pass because she was kind of saying like she usually does her whole routine in the shower and she just doesn't like that water dripping down her arm. So I felt like she only did it for the video in that in that case. And same with this one, she she just kind of knows what she's doing with her skin. And that goes back to being a dermatologist. She knows how she's handling her skin and everything. Like when I'm telling you guys stuff that seems very black and white, like the advice is like very black and white, there's no gray area. Listen, there's always a gray area in life in general, in skincare especially, and beauty also um, but usually when I'm like kind of just like laying down the law and saying like this is the way it goes in skincare it's because it's just easier to generalize than it is to you know like try to say like well in this specific case and then in this specific case and then in this specific case it changes it's like everything is personal when it really comes down to it everything is personal if it works for you it works for you if it doesn't you should you know pay attention to your skin and I'm trying to like educate you guys and share this information so that you can eventually build up all of this information in your minds and be like, you know what, this is what I'm doing. Maybe this isn't working for me. Maybe this is working for me. Maybe I need to add something. So this is why it's good to have this information and why I say to also watch other people on YouTube, Google other things, go see your dermatologist, see an esthetician, because the more information you have, the more you can really start to understand what's happening with your skin, because there are just so many different opinions in the beauty industry, especially in skincare. So this is a really good example of a time where I'm gonna be like, you know, Makeup wipes weren't that bad in this because they weren't, they really weren't. She ended up cleansing her skin, truly cleansing it. She also used a makeup remover right before she used it. So, you know, it's kind of like, I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna let it be a pass. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I hope you learned a lot. Um, I thought it was really interesting to watch Dr. Sandra Lee um, give herself even like a, her own uh, cortisone injection because that's always interesting to see too. Find me in our private Facebook group if you wanna have more conversations with me. We have a whole online community of people that just love skincare and love beauty in general. You can find me on Instagram. I'm at Susan Yara. Tell me in the comments you wanna see next and I'll talk to you soon because the light is getting dark, you guys. It's getting dark outside really quickly now, so I gotta end this video. So I'll talk to you soon. Bye.